Move it up, son. Word. Yeah. To all the killers and the hundred dollar billers. Yeah, watch billers. Out the for real, because who ain't got no feelings? Feelings. Just watch my back. I got your friend. Check it out now. I got you stuck off the realness. We be the infamous. Building muscle. A very simple concept at an eye's glance, right? But in actuality, it can become more complicated if you decide to overcomplicate it. Building muscle at a core is a very easy concept. You break the muscle down, repair the muscle, grow muscle. That's pretty much it. Through my years of learning how to grow and build my muscles, I've gone back and forth between different training styles in the goal of perfecting my endeavor to build said muscle. The last couple of years, my training has been more so based around isolation movements, using anatomical advantages, targeting certain muscle groups, all these kinds of familiar concepts to you. And while most of these pretty much still should apply to your training regimen, there's a factor that a lot of people seem to switch on and off between, me being one of those people, and that is pure, unadulterated intensity. When I first started lifting, my first months were based solely around the three big compounds, squat, bench, and deadlift. Now, I have dwindled from these three compounds in the last couple years since my endeavors have switched from a power lifter style to more bodybuilder style training. And while my physique has most definitely improved since I have stopped doing those, I feel like quality of the tissue that I put on is missing out on the texture, the quality, the look that those three heavy compounds bring. And while I won't be doing exactly those three specifically, the flat bench, the barbell squat, and the barbell deadlift, I will be incorporating familiar movements that I did focus on more in the past in the goal of just packing on raw, dense muscle tissue. Because at the end of the day, the high intensity, heavy weight lifting is really what builds that thick tissue. And me and my future goals require me to have said thick, dense tissue. So starting today, we are going back to the roots, but we're instilling an old school bodybuilder style of training. I'm very excited to do this. What does this include, Dominic? What do you mean, old school bodybuilder style of training? Well, you have to see in today's workout, but to essentially sum it up, we're gonna be incorporating some heavy ass compounds and we're basically just gonna get fucking huge. Like I mentioned in the last video, I don't have a competition set for the rest of this year, which means that we are solely in grow time. Now, given my current scenario of me being in a gut restoration phase, a health phase if you call it, my carbs are super low, all of my food is from fats and protein pretty much, except for pre and post workout. Uh, so recovery in that aspect is gonna be a little bit dwindled. So I'm taking this time here while I prep for another off-season push essentially to get my body familiarized with these movements that I'm going to dub as new but I have done in the past. The main ones that I'm gonna be really focusing on, really heavy rows, barbell rows, T-bar rows, any kind of row that you can think of. A very heavy kind of press, more so leaning in the tendency of a flat Smith machine and inclined barbell press. And for legs, we're pretty much sticking with the same, any kind of heavy squatting movement. I've been really loving my pendulum squat lately, but we'll switch between a pit shark, which is a belt squat, a leg press, maybe a hack squat here and there. And essentially, I'm gonna be structuring my training around those three movements and just progressively overloading each week. Now, in terms of reps and set schemes, we're just gonna say simple, old Menser style, one to two sets, one really, really heavy, six to eight, higher intensity, lower reps. Back off set, a little bit higher reps, still pretty high intensity, going to failure on both of these sets. And that's pretty much how it's just gonna be. We'll incorporate things like drop sets and rest pause sets here and there. Typically for muscles like arms, we're gonna be sticking with higher volume. The whole goal of this new training adaption is to just go heavy as hell with good form, not risking for injury, but we need to go heavier. My training has been too conservative lately and I'm really sick of it and pretty bored of it. So we're going back to the roots, the things that packed on the most amount of muscle for me in the beginning of my training. Now gonna capitalize on those factors of me having the experience of how to do set movements correctly, and we're just gonna get 
huge with some big numbers. Ugh. Now that our training is gonna be amped up that much more with the heavier weights, our supplementation in the form of pre-workout needs to be amplified a little bit more. Good thing we now have Euphoria to do this. Today's combo, the standard two and two. Two stim, two pump, all you really need. My new policy for pre-workout timing has changed a little bit in the last couple of months. Instead of drinking it like on the way to the gym, I now pretty much drink it at my house because the gym is pretty much a 15 minute drive from here, give or take. By that time, I find that the pre-workout is like semi-saturated into my system. And by the time it gets saturated for 30 minutes, which is around the time I would be done, with my warm-ups and ready to start my actual workout with working sets, it's fully saturated and I'm ready to go. Inventory, three ice cubes. Code DOM for 15% off of all Euphoria products and future products that are coming. Now that we are situated and ready to start getting ready for our workout, I wanna do a little bit of a talk segment here about some things that I've been thinking of lately. Let's talk content really quickly. I've been MIA from YouTube for a while. That has changed. I've posted two videos before this one. So we're gonna pretty much aim for at least, at the very bare possible minimum, one video a week. Two is the likely range that it will fall. Possibly three, if I find the time for it, three videos a week. I'm just gonna try to pump out good quality content. And this pretty much stems across all my social media platforms, YouTube, here, TikTok, daily Instagrams, I pretty much do that already. And I've been posting a lot on Snapchat. So I'll have the information for all of this stuff in the description. It's pretty much just my name across all the platforms if you are interested to keep up to date and see what I do, how I do things, and what we're gonna be doing in the future feel free to go ahead. But the recent drive and motivation for this has really stemmed from the first quarter, because I guess it's, I guess we're at the end of the quarter for this year, I don't really know, May, maybe the first half of this year, I would call it. First half of this year, my whole life pretty much took a complete 180 into the other direction of where I thought it was going to be going. I was in a prep since January for a bodybuilding competition, and now looking back on it and reflecting on it, I really went into it with the wrong mindset and the mindset that I was trying to avoid, ironically. I essentially just identified myself as a bodybuilder and forgot who I was at the core, who Dominic Galena is, the person aside from the bodybuilder. I got so obsessed with the lifestyle that I neglected the things that I fell in love with the most first, which is content creation, video creation, photography, editing, connecting with people, all of these kinds of things. I haven't been traveling as much. I haven't seen a lot of my fitness friends as much as I would like to. And I just fell into a rut where I was so isolated and I forced myself into this isolation and I found comfort in it because, you know, I would justify all of the impulsive thoughts that I was feeling uh, by the fact that I was just alone. So being in an isolation for so long and not connecting with people who are, one, around my niche, two, who are greater in their endeavors than I am, it made me feel very alone and, and very demoralized and very unmotivated and I didn't want to do anything. And really in the last couple of weeks, it's all just kind of flipped upside down and um, I'm back to where I felt originally when I first started lifting. I, I'm falling in love with training all over again. I'm falling in love with content creation again. With no competitions being set in mind, I'm still working towards a long-term goal. You know, I thought that the bodybuilding competition was pretty much my only goal and that was the only thing that mattered, but it's so much greater than that. And this has not only allowed for me to mature in aspects of my bodybuilding career, but me as a person as well, my financial status, my relationship status, my family status, everything has been affected by this in what I would say is a positive way because there's been so much introspection in these last couple months that I have almost been forced to become a new me again, which is great. We're always evolving. We're just like fucking, we're just like a Pokemon. We're always evolving. We're in the fifth stage evolution, even though that doesn't even exist. We're going to the fucking mega evolution. So essentially to sum it all up, expect a lot more from me in terms of content wise, putting myself out there. I'm really gonna start taking this seriously like I did in the beginning again when I just had a burning fire every day to wake up, lift, create content, and enjoy my life. And I've lost it for a while, but now we're back. And it feels really, really good. So I hope you guys enjoy the ride moving forward because the rest of this year, I have a lot of big goals leading into next year. I gotta start making shit happen. The first best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. 
and the second best time is today or whatever that cheesy line is. But the principle still applies. Best time to start, if not yesterday, is today. So here we go. Top sets on pull downs, another top set on T bar rows here. And we're going to do a back off and possibly a drop set also. It starts with one thing. thing I don't know why It doesn't even matter how hard you try Keep that in mind I'm designed to try to explain in due time All I know Time is a valuable thing Watch it fly by as the pendulum swings Watch it count down to the end of the day The clock takes life away It's so unreal Didn't look out below Watch the 
time go right out the window Trying to hold on, to, didn't even know I wasted it all just to watch you go I kept everything inside and even though I tried It all fell apart What it meant to be will eventually be a memory of a time I tried so Session concluded. Overall, happy. A little bit of criticism. <clears throat> so, I did a different form of row today. I did like a, a Meadows row instead of just like a normal chest supported T bar, um, which is a little bit more load on the lower back and the hamstrings and glutes, which I kind of wanted. Now I remember why I really don't like doing those because. It just puts so much stress on my lower back and my lower back is very susceptible to, I guess, tightening up super fast because it's on fire. Let alone, if you saw a little bit of tidbit at the end, those deadlifts, they felt great. They felt super good. But afterwards, when I was going on the stairs and my kind of like, my central nervous system started to calm down a little bit and I was kind of relaxing going on my 25 minutes of cardio, my left lower back, which is I've notoriously had issues with in the past when I was deadlifting, inflamed up right away so we're gonna do a nice good old hot bath with some epsom salt when we get back home but um that basically just confirms that deadlifts are not on the menu for me unfortunately i just can't i feel like it's too taxing on me one uh which i could definitely get around later on as i get more conditioned to it but it just puts my lower back at such a risk that uh, i would rather get more out of like a chest supported t-bar row or a one-arm dumbbell row than doing like a deadlift or something kind of like that. And to substitute for like a hip hinge movement, I'm just gonna continue to do like RDLs occasionally on my leg days. Barbell and dumbbell, I don't really care. I don't I don't really have any issues with those, which is strange. Deadlifts are just some, something about getting it off the floor. I don't really know why. Yeah, that pretty much concludes the workout. Finished up with some biceps. Didn't really film that much because I was just so locked in, but I'm really liking the new style of training. It's pretty much just one, two sets on everything. I was experimenting with some high volume for the last couple months and I just found that it just burnt me out so much. And I mean high volume on like pretty much everything. And I'm pretty much just gonna stick one, two sets on most stuff. Arms are gonna get higher volume. Some accessories like like cable pullovers, like stuff towards the end of the workout will fluff up a little bit with some higher volume incorporate some set schemes like drop sets and rest pauses but for the most part it's pretty much just gonna stay high intensity low volume because i feel like that's what has just transformed my physique the most end of the meathead footage let's go home and recover now where'd he go there he is asher <laughs> this is literally what he does every time he sees us come home he either goes in that window or in this little window. It's actually kind of scary looking. I had to make a quick pit stop to pick up my favorite thing on the earth. Apple cider vinegar. In my gut restoration protocol plan, essentially what we're trying to do is increase my stomach acid levels because my stomach acid levels are just basically in the shitter. So I'm taking a supplement called betaine hydrochloride which is a stomach acid support supplement, but I'm also taking a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar before every single meal. And I'm telling you, I literally got a bottle maybe a week and a half ago and destroyed it. So we're on to bottle number two now, and this is a big one also. Fucking sucks. This is probably the most sucky part. I can do like supplements at certain times and shit, but this, sometimes it just burns so badly and other times I'm like unaffected, but if you guys are looking to improve your digestion, a tablespoon of this just one time in the morning fasted uh, before a meal is the way to go. You will definitely see results if you implement this and a couple other things as well. I am starving. Look at my dog. Hi. What are you doing in the window? It's creepy. We're, uh, we're in the process of fixing this. Are you fucking kidding me? I broke it? No, I just bought these lanterns. Oh wait. Oh, oh no. Oh God, the needle is sticking out now. This is nursing 101. They don't teach you this in the school. God damn it. Sugar, motherfucker. I just bought all this stuff for like $20. Gotta be careful there, buddy. No, don't. 
How about Epsom salt? Pink salt, Epsom salt. Nice hot bath. Hey, Poochie. You dropped the camera and broke the LCD screen. No, I did not. You did. I didn't drop it.